Hey everybody, it's a uh, golf update here from Tony George, DocSports.com, U.S. Open at Wingfoot. Uh, usually we have a show with myself and Doug Upstone. We had some technical difficulties today. Cox Cable was not working properly, so we tried to tape the show for over a half hour and couldn't get it done. So I'm doing a standalone show and going to give you some tourney picks in this tournament. This uh, tournament is just north of New York City. Um... Three months past when it was supposed to be played, so the course is going to have some different dynamics on it. And Wingfoot is a par 70, 7,400 yard test of golf, the toughest course that this field has seen uh, all year. And even if it was a regular uh, tournament uh, season versus a COVID restart shortened season, this will be the toughest golf course they face. As a matter of fact, the last time a U.S. Open was played here, uh, the winning score was five over par. So you're not going to see a birdie fest this week. DJ is, Dennis Johnson, DJ, is not going to go 30 under. This is, par is a acceptable score here. Um, also, anybody with a three or four stroke lead, even going into Sunday, that lead can dissipate in one hole. That's how quick it can happen on this golf course. Uh Obviously, very narrow, narrow fairways, uh, four-inch rough off the fairway. Deeper rough is five inches. It's been rainy up there, so it's wet and soggy. Sand in strategic places, and this is a type of golf course with these greens, which are legendary, where a 12 to 15 putt left could be considered a lag putt and not a makeable birdie putt. That's how undulated and tiered these greens are. As a matter of fact, I was watching a piece on Golf Channel this week. A Miller Barber, or Barber who won a golf tournament here said there was a par three on the front side that was right at 200 yards where all four days he laid up on a par three to be able to chip the ball because he was a great short game guy, to be able to chip the ball where he wanted to on the green to assure himself par. And that particular hole that year, in 2006, fast forward 40-some years, was the second hardest hole on the golf course. And it was par three and it was right at 200 yards. And most these tour players have six or seven irons in their hand for a 200-yard shot. So um, the best players in the world are going to rise to the top. There's not going to be some unknown that comes out of nowhere and wins this tournament. And you take a look at the odds here. Uh... Dustin Johnson, uh, plus 800. Rom, plus 950. Justin Thomas, uh, 1,200. Xander Schauffele, who I think is going to have a good tournament, plus 1,400 or 14 to 1. Uh, Morikawa, who won the PGA Championship, 16 to 1. Roy McIlroy, always on the leaderboard uh, in terms of uh, the odds to win a big tournament, 18 to 1. Bryson DeChambeau, 25 to 1, is a waste of money. In my opinion, Webb Simpson, also a sleeper here, 25 to 1. Um, and everybody always wants to know about Tiger Woods. Uh, he's at 40 to 1 or plus 4,000. And I don't think Tiger's going to factor into this tournament at all. But nonetheless, um, the one thing you want to emphasize when you're handicapping this tournament is not length. Length does you absolutely nothing if you're not accurate here. If you are off the fairway here, you are looking at bogey. And I'm talking the best players in the world. A lot of these fairways are 15 to 20, 25 yards max wide. You got to hit fairways here. And you got to be able to be accurate with your irons tee to green or uh, fairway to green because I'll tell you what, if you put your ball in the wrong position above the hole on a downhill putt or whatever, you're dead. You're not going to get a par. It's that type of tournament. It really is. And there's a few players here where that brings some guys into play. And also scrambling around the greens is going to be absolutely important. Got to be able to get it up and down. Um, so scrambling statistics, driving accuracy statistics, overall driving statistics are going to be crucial in this tournament. So that being said, I'll give you some of my picks I was going to give you on the show. And these are top five. Um, trying to pick a winner here um, is virtually impossible. Really is. I, I think if you don't have Dustin Johnson, 
top five, top 10, top 20, you're stupid. The odds are, you know, I think he's the only player in the top five that's a minus. I think he's like minus 120. Other than that, everybody's a plus. So let's go through some of these here. and I'll give you my picks and I'll let you get out of here and uh, we'll get back to handicapping some football. Wingfoot, U.S. Open. Tees off tomorrow. I will have at DocSports.com. Free 60 bucks to the link in the description below. Um, I will have head-to-heads round per round in this tournament. Okay? So, finish it strong. And don't forget, we have the Masters coming up in November for the next major. The British Open, the Open Championship, as they call it nowadays, is officially off the board this year. But nonetheless... Um, Top five, a, a player I like that can win this tournament, and you have to have a temperament to win this tournament. You have to be willing to accept par as a good score, and that's something these players are not conditioned to. The older, wily veteran guys been around eight, ten years, they understand that. Some of these young guns, we'll see how their temperament holds up. That being said, I think one young player that has the game and the temperament, um, if he can scramble around the greens well, it's Xander Schauffele. And he is a top five at plus 340 and a top 10 at plus 125, or plus 155, which I think is one of the best bets on the board. Xander Schauffele, top 10, plus 155. Top 10s as well, Patrick Reed, plus 350, and Matt Wolf at plus 550. These are top 10 finishes, not per round for the overall tournament. Patrick Reed is one of those guys, whether you love him or you hate him, you know, um, he's, a, he's a very good golfer. Uh, he's extremely good around the greens and at putting. And that is going to come into play in this tournament, big time. Matt Wolf, extremely accurate, weird swing, as you all know. But one of these guys, he's on a lot of fantasy boards this week. One of the big top fantasy picks. If you watch, and I do watch daily fantasy shows for golf. Um, just to get their takes on individual players because those guys are really good at doing what they do and I don't mind uh, borrowing some of their expertise in order for me to get an edge on the books. But um, Patrick Reed was mentioned a lot as well as Matt Wolf, and I agree with that. Top 20, Abraham Answer at plus 300. Very, very good uh, golfer from Mexico that has all the statistics you need to be able to place high in this tournament. And Patrick Reed at plus 150 again as well. Um, those are my picks for this tournament. Um, and again, DJ, top 5, top 10, top 20. Um, of course, you're getting into some big minus numbers on a top 20. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think he will factor in. You can never ignore a guy that doesn't get rattled, uh, that has the iron game. If his irons are dialed in, he's as good as anybody. He's taken a lot of added time on the greens with his brother as caddy, with a routine to set up his first putt. And uh, set up on your first putt on these greens is crucial. Again, very rarely do you see a course on tour where a 15 to 20 foot putt, you know, is not a makeable birdie putt. It is a lag putt to get yourself in position just to make a par. And I would not be surprised to see the final uh, score uh, over par here. The last five UF Opens that have been here, have all been over par scores. I don't see, despite the talent, the technology, you know, um, the balls, the equipment, all the improvements, even since 2006, which was 14 years ago, this is still a test of golf. And um, I think the cream will rise to the top. And we mentioned some of those players here. Um, a lot of guys are high on Colin Morikawa. I don't know. Um, Saw him frustrated a lot um, in, in the uh, uh, FedEx uh, the 2022 or championship um, at the end of the day. And uh, maybe throw a flyer out there on Webb Simpson on top top 10, top 20 as well. Um, he's kind of faded as the season went along, which is why I'm not as high on him as a lot of people. Those are my picks. That's the U.S. Open. Picks will be up over at Docs. Sorry about the golf show and the te technical difficulties with Doug Upstone. We'll do another one for you for the Masters, and we'll be sure that one works out for you. Best of luck in the U.S. Open this week. Enjoy.